of Israel, 12 tribes strong, scattered to the four corners of the earth, waking up in these last days to the truth of who we are. Oh my. <laughs> oh yes. It took all these years, over 400 years, we didn't know who we were. We didn't know whose we were. Why? Captivity. Why? Chattel slavery. Why? Our last name was stolen and replaced by these dirty, nasty slaver names. Why? Because our language was stolen. And given this perverse, demonic, harsh posh of a language, this filthy thing coming up out of Europe, even the Europeans say that the English language is defiled. Therefore, they made it hard on us, Zion. They told you you was a spook. They told you you wasn't nothing. You run around Africa with no clothes on, climbing through and swinging on trees. And you better be glad for white, white, J. Fettick, C. Zara Bourget image that came down to save your black self and turn you Christian 
and make you fit for the for for heaven through the whips, through their whips on your back, and through them slave ships and slave quarters and lynching and hangings and oh my and had us believe in it for four hundred years. It chased us down like dogs if we tried to run away for 400 years. If we tried to get slavery, get away from slavery and try to get freedom and equal rights. Y'all know the story. I ain't got to say it. How do I know you know? Because every year in the month of February, it's Negro Slavery Reminder Month of who you are, slave. And who the master is, the white man, and learn your place. Because every single one of them movies come out the same. He's your savior. If you don't some kind of way get it through him, you can't have it at all. Well, them times are changing. That's all I got to say. <laughs> what my way? I said those times are changing. It's a new season, it's a new shift. According to our Holy Bible, our Aleph and our Omega is coming back to get us and to deliver us from the hands of our captivities worldwide. Bible. Our Aleph is coming. Who? Our King of Kings. And I'm master of master. And no, he will not have not a lick of Caesar Bourget images about him. How you know? I can hear y'all talking. Especially you sneak listeners. How you know? How you know he don't look like Caesar Bourget? Is Caesar Bourget up out of the tribe of Yehuda? No. Caesar Bourget got hair like lambs wool? No. The Caesar Borges face, hands, arms, legs, feet look like burnt brass that's been tried through the fire? No. Eyes red like he got judgment on his mind. No. Y'all about to see our king. And wait a minute. He's about to do some writing. And, and, and listen, he's not writing in no English. You forget that. Mm -mm. And, he, and he's not writing. He's not writing. And he's not, he's not writing in no French, in no Germany. No. Our king gonna write in Hebrew. And wait a minute. What Hebrew? Pentagraph. And all of you Hebrew students that have been following the Awakening Remnant Coalition, you know that we teach all three forms. But we tell everybody that the original is the pentagraph. And that's how we carry the meanings of our letters. And in these last days, right on time, he re he's returning the language back to the people. Because 20 or 30 years ago, if he would have put an Aleph or a Bet in pictograph form across this nation, I'm willing to say 99.9999999% of the people watching me would not have had a clue what that was. But we've come out of darkness now and we're starting to walk in the marvelous light. I'm Dr. Yoshiyahu. I'm more right here at the Awakening Remnant Coalition. And Mori in Hebrew is teacher. And I'm telling you, we're living in some 
in some exciting times, I am. Welcome in the room. If you can see the more Ray, okay, and hear me all right. Would you do me a favor and place a number seven in the chat, please? And welcome to the chat. And welcome there to the administrators in the chat. And uh, Toda Rabah for all the work that you do. To all of you who benefit from these lessons, and you learn from the lessons, you're encouraged by the lessons, then according to the Holy Bible and our covenant, then you are to support the one that's bringing the lesson. The ones, because it's just not me. We're in this thing together. Hallelujah. But the scripture says that if we are sharing with you these spiritual things, and what is it if you share your carnal things? That's in the Bible. What does that mean? It means that in our covenant, we agreed to an exchange. Yeah, I say, I'm going to call out certain people and I'm going to have them focusing on this 100%. So as a result, they're not going to get the land and the jobs and the inheritance of the other tribe. They'll be set apart. But then I'm going to make sure everybody else got something so that they can take a piece of it, a 10% of it a tenth part, which is a percentage, and we'll make sure that through that, those that are working full-time in the ministry can continue. So hallelujah, hallelujah, and told our rabbi for those of you who understand that part of the covenant and are also obedient to that part of the covenant, because really we got to be obedient to all the parts. Share these videos, Zion, because YouTube is not going to do it. I promise you. <laughs> I told Jasmine uh, over the Hananiah Project, I said, I've watched the videos and every time one of our videos starts to go viral, I'm talking about like if it starts to pick up, it, it's like, <laughs> it's like they got a thing set up. Well, they sent a letter, told us they was gonna do this anyway, but they got a thing set up to where they just stop it. Ooh. So it'll be it'll be going like this, and then just doop. <laughs> Ain't it? So the only way it keeps going, you all have to share it, cause they're not gonna allow it to keep going because they only are they're trying to push an agenda, and and I'm not necessarily a part of that agenda. This is an educational platform, teaching people who we are and whose we are, and trying to help folk understand the word. So no, we don't have any. Uh, donors and uh, big, uh, you know, big, big, big money people or organizations or industries or businesses. We have you. Help us out. Share these videos. Help wake up Jacob. Now, I'm going to get to my lesson because it's a good one tonight, Zion. <laughs> oh, my. You saw the thumbnail. And in the thumbnail... You saw the subject that this Aleph Tav, this, this Aleph Tav that is formed across this nation is a signification. That's what it is, a sign. And a sign is a pointing to something. And we have to pay attention Every time Yah gives us a sign, whenever he, whenever he points to something and says, I need you to see this, then that means it's very important that we look at the sign and try to understand it. Because if we don't understand the sign, it's not going to do us any good. And before I even finished um, getting into this, I, I got to say this. Once again... My job is to help you see the scriptures. You are supposed to be studying. You are supposed to be reading your Bible. But at the same time, how can they hear without a, a preacher? And how can he preach except, they, except he be sent? So the idea is my job as a moray is to bring the scriptures to you in such a way 
that as you're reading and as you're studying, you will see things in ways that you haven't seen them before. Abaya begins to open your eyes. And the reason we need our eyes open to this covenant, oh my, is because, because nobody ever told you that you were in a covenant. And nobody ever told you that you are in a, a blood covenant. And the reason is because they've tried to squash that information so that you could, you would never be able to trace your lineage back. Why do you think they only tell you that you came from slaves? That's it. They don't want to tell you where you are, who you are, whose you are, your original language, what you believe, your customs. They don't want to talk about your accomplishments. They don't want to talk about none of that. You was a slave. That's all they want you to know. You was a slave. Just don't, don't, don't worry about that. And you should be glad. And, and this is their, this is their theology. You ought to be grateful that you were a slave here because you would have never found white Caesar Bourget and had the white man as your God. That's what their doctrine is, and that's what we believe. That's why instead of everybody on um, on social media out preaching and teaching like the more concerning our who we are and whose we are and turning to the covenant of our ancestors, the majority of the people are doing what? Getting ready to celebrate as starting Easter, the satanic demonic. Uh, uh, godless little G of the past. They getting ready for that. Instead of them teaching what I'm teaching, which is the Bible, they telling, telling people, hey, 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 we got to eat clean. They say, y'all get them nasty pigs ready. Don't forget, we got to offer this offering to the queen of heaven. Get them pigs ready. Get them pie out, put on that pig. Then we're going to eat it. Then we're going to bless the queen of heaven. Then we're going to eat it. And don't forget to make the cakes, the hot cross bun, and, and the so-called the little Easter uh, biscuits. And, and Oh, my God. It's a satanic shame that our people are still caught up in that foolishness, especially when this truth been going for. But according to the Holy Bible, they would be stiff-necked. Their ears would be wax fat. They'd be greedy dogs that can never get enough. They would devour the flock of Yah. And it would be as the blind leading the blind, and they both go to hell. So in these last days, we must sound the trumpet. Why? Because nobody told us we were in a covenant. And nobody told us that we were in a blood covenant. And nobody told us that our captivity in the Americas and all and scattered all over the world was a result of our ancestors turning their back on this covenant. They never told us that. They were too busy trying to tell us how to color these days. going to hell. But we're in a covenant. And, and, and look, why y'all chose me the least of the least? I don't know. I wouldn't have chose myself. So before people say, who are you? Just a voice. You go, so you think you're the one to tell the nation. I'm one of them. Yeah, for sure. How did he choose you? Through the gutter? Out of the garbage can? Any other questions? <laughs> Woke me up to who I was and 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 entrusted me with this message for the house of Israel. And I gotta tell it. Now, if y'all understand that, put a 12 in here for the 12 tribes of Israel. And we're going to continue. This, this uh, eclipse that's coming, 
I, I, I told you all last time we were together that this particular eclipse is gonna do more it's gonna do more than just make a Tom. Oh, I told about them 12s. It's gonna do more than just make the Tom. Although it is gonna make the Tom. I, I mentioned to you it's gonna do two things at the same time. <clears throat> While it is making the Tom, which is this one, we, we proved this one. We also are going to prove, and I know they got Paleo Hebrew, but in reality, um, this goes back to picture graph. I'll show it to you. But they know what this is. It's going to use one line to connect both. This line that's coming right here will be the connecting point for both. Now, because I don't have time in just one video to go too deep into that, I just want to show you something. That all through the Bible, we're going to hear that our king, Yehoshua HaMashiach, uh, is the Aleph Tav. We're going to find that out. We're going to, and if you want to know the definition of Aleph Tav, you can look in the, book, in the book of Isaiah. He says, it represents I'm the beginning and the end. I begin it, then I work it, and then I end it. It represents I'm the author of it. I wrote it up. I designed it. And I'm the finisher of it, which is what? Don't worry, you better stay on the subject. I gotta stay on the subject, but I, I, I feel, you know, a lot of folk don't know this about me because I mainly do teaching. 90% of what I do is teaching, but y'all don't know that I'm a preacher before I'm a teacher. I'm a preacher first. I was called to preach first. And every now and then, while I'm teaching, my first calling be trying to jump up in me. Man, you know you want to preach that subject. Go on and preach it. No, I got to teach. So I have to, I have to fight with my first inclination and my first nature say, man, just, just preach this. Because when I start talking about the author and the finisher, watch this. He not only is the author, not only did he write the course and the finisher, not only is the course completed, but he himself chose to run the course himself. Oh my. Oh yeah, yes, yeah. He created the course. And then and then he participated and ran the course that he designed. And then he finished it. He finished the course. And then at the end of the course, you know, he died. I told you the preaching thing coming up. Gave his life. That was a part of the course. Was buried in Joseph's new tomb. Now part of the course. Rose again on the third day, according to the scripture, a uh, part of the course. Then he met with his disciples. Y'all should read the text. It's a, a powerful text. And then he said, as the Father has sent me, even so send I you. In other words, you saw me run the course. So before you'd be talking about, I can't run that course. Oh, yes. Look, look unto Yahushua. That's how you do it. Yeah, you can finish the course. He finished it. I told you I can't do that. I can't. I didn't come in here to preach that sermon. Whole another message. But somebody need to hear it when you get weary. You can finish the course. Ah, 
when you get hungry, you can finish the course. When you get lonely and you're all by yourself, you can finish the course. Don't let nobody tell you the course can't be finished. Don't let them tell you that the mountains are too high. No, he climbed them. You can climb them. Don't let nobody tell you the valleys are too low. The nights are too long. The sun is too hot. There is no excuse for not finishing the course. You can finish. <laughs> Where was I? Oh, let's get back to this coming. Let's get back to this coming. But if you're in the room and you know, listening to the moment, some of y'all done did it already. The moment, you right. I know you can finish this course, man. Uh, look, put a 1,000 in the chat. I got to get into this lesson tonight. I got to show you something. Put a 1,000 in the chat. If you know that if we keep our eyes on our king, the author and finisher of the course, if we do that, we can finish the course ourselves. And the way them 100, what did I say put in here? Thousand, one of them, way them thousands in here. All I can say is hallelujah. All right. <clears throat> I want to give you some verses. And if you're just not coming in the room, shalom, shalom. Glad to have you. And to uh, the administrators in the room, shalom, shalom. You know I'm happy to have you with us um, on tonight. Okay. Last week or last time we were together, we answered the question, how do we get into the covenant? And of course I said, Abraham put us in the covenant. And when we went into covenant with Yah, you saw the picture of the cutting of the animals, but you also saw that it was Yah who went through the, the pieces on behalf of Abraham. In other words, he was basically saying that if some kind of way Abraham was to fail, then that he himself would become surety for the covenant. The word is that he would then ratify the covenant. You know what? I think I wrote that. Hold on for a minute. That might be in my notes. I said to myself, next time I, I teach this lesson, I might need to uh, explain to the people what ratify means. Because I, I say it all the time. And I want you to understand what that means. So the ratification of the covenant, and here it is right here. All right. So when I say that our king ratified the covenant, well, that's the scriptures actually say that. It means that that's a sign or given formal consent to a treaty, a contract, or an agreement, making it officially valid. Do you see that? So when you ratify something, you're making it officially valid. And our covenant was not ratified with the blood of the bulls and the goats and the turtle doves. Not the she goats, not the red heifer. Those were, those were like guarantees. Those those were place markers, uh, placeholders. They were significations, ah, shadows, if you please. <laughs> but they did not ratify the covenant. Officially, the covenant was not ratified. Completely, I'm talking about from the beginning of the covenant, to the end, it was not completely ratified until the shedding of the blood of our king. So we're going to see this covenant and it carries throughout our in our entire uh, um, our entire story, our entire history. OK, so I'm glad I thought about that just now uh, because that's been on my heart to share that. I know I use that term a lot. And I wanted people to know what I meant. Okay. Where are we at on time? Okay, good. So the covenant uh, has a beginning. 
And the, the very first time we see a covenant, we also see the shedding of blood. Right? And of course, we've already that that's that's um in the garden with um Adam and Shema. And then what happened? The blood and of the of the animal was put on them when those coats were put on them, right? And they were covered. Picture of our king who's gonna eventually come and die on behalf of us. But then, of course, there's a crazy, the man goes nuts and the world is like in a weird, satanic, demonic situation to where the thoughts of people were just evil continually, which is now, again, we're right there again. It's probably worse now than it was before, uh, before Noah. But then, when we get to Genesis, <clears throat> um, chapter five you can look in there and then you begin to see a man named noah so in chapter five and chapter six all the way through chapter nine you see yah working with a small remnant which is actually just noah and his family because the world is so wicked and therefore he goes into covenant with with noah all right so then we see that the world is destroyed the remnant the small remnant is saved that's already happened once. All right? Okay. Then after Noah, we know that Noah then through um, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, that Shem is now uh, the covenant bearer. And Abraham is called out of Ur of Chaldees in order to go into covenant with Yah. On behalf, now watch this. At this time, he's going to go on in covenant with Yah on behalf of Ham, Shem, and Japheth. I know you're like, what, Moe? Don't worry about that. I'll get to that in another video. That the purpose of Abraham's call was to go into a covenant to produce the promised seed that through him the whole world would be blessed or that the whole world would have the opportunity really to be saved because that's what it really means all right and so abraham is now carrying this promise and that's why it's so important that we understand that yah has chosen once again to go into covenant with someone on behalf of the whole world so um um Ooh. Let's fast forward a little. We already know that Abraham didn't have a son at the time of the covenant, but that there was a promise. So let's go to uh, Genesis. I want to go to Genesis chapter 19. And let's look at how this, we're going to start to see how this covenant narrows. All right. <clears throat> so, in Genesis chapter 19, no, 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 I'm going to skip that. Go to Genesis chapter uh, 21. Let's go to uh, Genesis 21. And Abraham, and Yahuwah visited Sarah and said, uh, verse, as he has said, in verse 1, And Yahuwah did unto Sarah as he had spoken, for Sarah conceived. And bear Abraham a son in his old age, at the time of which Yah has spoken to him. And Abram called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bore. Remember, he already had Ishmael. But the one whom Sarah bare unto him was Isaac. And verse 4. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as Yah had commanded him. Why? Because that's the covenant. So right there, we see that Isaac is in the covenant. Isaac is a baby. It's his dad that puts him in the covenant according to Torah. So now, I want to show you, at this point... <clears throat> We have two sons in the covenant. Same covenant, but two sons. 
Hagar's son, which is Ishmael, and Sarah's son, which is Isaac. Okay? I want you guys to understand that. And that's why I always tell my Arabian brothers and sisters and my so-called Muslim brothers and sisters all over the world, I say to them, they're our cousins, for sure. And when we trace our lineage back, ain't no need us fighting one another. That don't make no sense. When we trace our lineage back, both of us were under the same covenant. Ishmael got circumcised by the same daddy that Isaac got circumcised by. Same Abaya, same covenant. And therefore, we call his name Yahuwah because our grandfather called his name Yahuwah. And the covenant that we are actually in is not a covenant, is not a covenant that was written in, in like 600 AD. No, the covenant that our ancestors, I'm talking to my, my Muslim brothers and sisters now, the covenant that we were actually put in was we were put in that by our grandfather. And that covenant was with Yahuwah. Yes, believe that. That's why I don't call his name Allah. That's why I don't call his the, 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 the prophet Muhammad. But I call his name Yahu, I call our king Yahuwah because in Torah it's spelled Yohe Wahe. And I call his name Yahushua. That's in my notes. I'm not going to get there today. But I call his name Yahushua because the name Yahushua says that Yah will save his people. So let's get that straight now. 100%. And believe it or not, you being Abraham's children, you need to go back and study the life and the and the covenant of your grandfather Abraham, just like we're studying it today. And no, we ain't mad at you. Don't get that twisted. Because we too were bowing down knees. It was even worse with us. Because we were bowing down knees too. A white European perverted image of a Roman. Oh. Oh my, name Caesar at Bourget. So no, we don't have no soapbox to stand on. Talking about how we were better than y'all. No, we got messed up too. All have sinned and come short of the very glorious ideal of Yahuwah. All right, now let's listen to it. And Abraham called the name of his son who was born unto him, uh, whom Sarah bare unto him, Isaac. Yes, that was Ishmael's little brother. And Abraham circumcised Isaac being eight days old. That's the covenant. He commanded him. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. And Sarah said, Yah hath made me to laugh so that all that here will laugh with me. And she said, who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah would give children suck? She was old, like 90 years old. For I have borne him a son in his old age. And the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had born unto Abraham, mocking. Wait, 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 what happened? Uh, Ishmael was mocking Isaac. Don't try to change history. This is what happened. We can't change our history either. We wish we could. In some instances, we did some terrible things as people. But this is where we see the division of the covenant. Because because um, Ishmael, some writers say that Ishmael was shooting arrows at his little brother Isaac, which could have killed him. Or was not just, it wasn't just talking. He, or he was doing, um, being rough with him, like like, you know, he's a he's a teenager and he's a little baby. 
And Sarah felt that Ishmael was showing signs of violence toward Isaac, which Sarah knew that Isaac was the promised son through the miracle birth. We saw that. And therefore, wherefore she said unto Abraham, cast out this bondwoman and her son. For the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. So what was she saying? She was like, this, this can't happen. It, has to be, it can't happen like this because he is showing violence. He's mocking Sarah's son, which is Isaac. This is the scripture that's been in the Bible the whole time. And the thing was very grievous to Abraham. So before you say Abraham was mean, Abraham did not want to do it at first. He didn't want to. He didn't want to, he didn't want to uh, be away from his son, his teenager's teenage son. This was a grievous thing, which meant most likely he had to weep and was, his heart was broke. Don't let people rewrite your history. Don't, don't let people put like he was being mean or anything. That's not what happened. I'm going to show you why he went along with Sarah. Yah said to Abraham, that's why. That's why he went along with Sarah, because Yah spoke to Abraham. Let it not be grievous in your sight because of the lad. I know you don't want to do this, but, and because of thy bondwoman. Once again, there must not only be love for, um, for Ishmael by Yah, and by Abraham, but there's also love to who? To Hagar. Are y'all still rolling with the moral, Ray? If you are, put a 500,000. What time is it? Put a 500,000. We got we to gotta see the Bible. Don't let people read, read your Bible uh, and tell you lies. You read it and see what it actually says. And then you read it, it says, and in, in all that Sarah has said unto thee, hearken. In other words, go ahead and listen to her. For in Isaac shall thy seed be called. And he was like, because it's true. Isaac is the one who is going to carry on your, is going to um, carry on the promise. But really is going to carry on the fulfillment of the covenant is really what he's saying. Isaac will have in his lineage, in his offspring, eventually, Hamashiach. That's what he was saying. And this is what I want you to hear. And also the son of the bondwoman, I, will I make a nation because he is thy seed. Do you see the promise? I told you. All the Muslims, all of the uh, Arabian people, all of those who follow the Quran and all that. Listen, they all know that they're Abraham's children. And what did Yah say? I'm going to make them a nation. So did he kick them to the curb? No. Did he throw them out? No, no. He heard a word from Yah that said, they will be great nations. And I'm doing it just like I'm going to do it for Isaac. I'm going to do it for them because they're your seed and because you are in a covenant with me. We're talking about our ancestors. So our uncle um, Ishmael, he was in the same covenant as Isaac. He just didn't have the promise of, the, of producing Hamashiach. And because of his behavior, he was separated from Isaac to preserve the mediator of the covenant. <laughs> oh my. To preserve the only one that can ratify the covenant. You know what? Every time I get ready to do this, I have in my mind, I want to go so much further and the time be running out on me, but that's okay. Maybe we'll just do this one and I'll come back to the next one. And Abraham rose up early in the morning, took bread and a bottle of water and gave it to Hagar and put the thing on her shoulder and the child and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. 
and the water was spent in the bottle. And she cast the child under one of the shrubs, and she went and sat down under, uh, once that, against him a good way off, as it were a bow shot. For she said, let not me see the death of the child. And she sat over against him and lifted up her voice and wept. Now listen to, gra to your grandmother, Hagar. Now our grandma is Sarah, but I want you to hear something about Hagar now. Y'all need to know something about her. She worshiped Yah. She worshiped Yahuwah. She was converted in Abraham's house. Please don't let people lie to you and say that she was, oh my. Let's just listen. Let's see whether or not. Let's see, let's see what she did according to our Holy Bible. It said, uh, and she sat over against him and lifted up her voice and wept. And Yahuwah heard the voice of the lad. And the angel of Yah called unto Hagar out of heaven. Who? The angel of Yahuwah. And said to her, What aileth thee, Hagar? Fear not, for Yah has heard the voice of the lad where he is. You see that, you see that relationship they have with the Most High? Does it sound like evil? Does it sound like something that he was doing to kill them? No, he's going to save them. I promise you. It's in the Bible. Arise, lift up the lad. Hold him in thy hand, for I will make him a great nation. I will do what? I'm going to throw him away. I'm through with him. I don't like him. He shouldn't have been doing it. No, he's like, no, no, he's going to be a great nation. Why? Because of the covenant of Abraham. That's why. You need to know this covenant. You need to know that this is a real thing. Um, them heathens... <clears throat> Those Europeans that captured us, the majority of them, they understand covenants. While you and I, Zion, we don't understand covenants. They operate with covenants all the time, and they operate with some, some dirty, nasty, dark, satanic, ritualistic covenants that they make in dungeons and in caves and up on hill. It's a, it's a sickening thing the way these heathens go into covenant. But let me tell you something about them. They know what covenants are. And they know that some covenants are everlasting. So they'll take the information that they get in these covenants and they pass them down. But it's a covenant of wickedness. They made a covenant with the adversary, with the devil, with Hasatan. All right, so just understand that this idea of a covenant is not just, you don't just find people making covenants in the Bible, but all through the world, they go into these covenants, but they're satanic covenants versus Yah's covenant, which is really always for the better. Because Yah's covenants are going to be based on truth. Yah's covenants are going to be based on his promises. So I want to continue before, um, I want to continue before I close this lesson. So I'm going to go a little faster. And Yah opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. Isn't that beautiful? And you know who that is, right? It's a representation of Hamashiach. <laughs> Same thing that happened to the woman at the well in what y'all call the New Testament. I ain't got time for that right now. And she went and filled uh, the bottle with water and gave to the lad to drink. And Yah was with the lad. And what? And Yah was with the lad. And what? And Yah. So you mean tell me that Yahuwah was with Ishmael? And now some of Ishmael's children don't want to follow Yah? You're in the same situation that we're in. Somebody taught you against your own ancestors. We're, gonna, we're coming up out of that now. Hallelujah. And he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. And he dwelt in the wilderness of Paran. And his mother took him a wife out of the land of Egypt. All right. So we see the covenant now is going two directions. 
One son is in the covenant following Yah. And is being blessed into having multiple nations. Why? Because he's Abraham's seed. And the same promise that was going to be to Isaac that you'll be of many nations also went to Ishmael except Ishmael in this covenant does not get the promised seed of the Messiah. But he is supposed to keep Torah. Oh, yeah. If y'all understand that, put 800,000 in the chat. Now, in the last, you know, I'm going to have to pick this up in another video again. <sighs> in the last part of the message, I want to show you something else because I'm still dealing with Aleph Tav. And we're still dealing with a covenant. I want you to see the test that Abraham is put through for Isaac being in the covenant. I'm going to show it. I want to show it to you. What I was trying to do really, I was trying to do all the patriarchs tonight, but we didn't get there. <laughs> so if y'all don't mind, we got to pick it up. We'll pick it up tomorrow. I'm trying to do it tomorrow. But I want to show you that Isaac was firmly rooted in the covenant. <laughs> More than you ever knew. Go to chapter 22. And it came to pass um, after these things that Yah did tempt or test. There's no mean tempt to sin. But he was putting Abraham to the test concerning the covenant. And he said, behold, here, here I am. And he said, take now thy son, thy only son. That means the only one left in the house. Isaac, whom thou lovest. And get thee into a land of Moriah. What? Yeah, go up to the mountain. And it's funny because the word Moriah is, is where you is kin to the word more, which is also kin to the word Torah. All of those words are kin. And they all have to do with the place of learning or the place of instruction. Or the instructor. I could go on with that. But watch. And take thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, unto the land of, Mor of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon the mountains, which I will tell thee of. Wait, what? Abraham understood the blood covenant. I'm telling you. But what he didn't understand concerning the blood covenant, there was a point where he didn't understand. He was like, I, I thought the blood covenant was just going to be animals. Let's read it. Let's see how serious this covenant is. And Abram, Abraham um, rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him and his son Isaac and Isaac his son and claved the wood for a burnt offering and rose up and went into the place which Yahuwah had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place, saw the place altar, um, and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said unto his young men, now watch Abraham's fate. Watch the covenant. He said, abide here with the, with the ass. And I and the lad will go yonder and worship. And come again unto you. Wait, 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 wait. You know you were told to offer Isaac. You told the men, you didn't say I'm going up here to offer Isaac. You said we're going to worship. <laughs> Actually, this is really the first official time you see the idea of worship. Where he's going to bring his son, whom he loved. The son of his old age. The son of his beloved wife. The son of the promise. The son of the 
the son that was told according to the covenant, it would be his seed that the world would be blessed. Now Yah is asking me to kill him. But because I don't really understand what Yah is doing, I'm just going to say we're going to worship. And whatever happened, me and the boy, we'll be back. Oh my. I gotta go. I gotta get out the room. But if y'all saw that, put a 900,000, please. 900,000. He told him we'll be back. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it up on Isaac, his son. Ain't that a picture of our king? Can you see it? Wasn't the wood laid on our king, Hamashiach? And he took fire in his hand and a knife. And they both went. And they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, Father, my father. And he said, here I am, here am I, my son. And he said, behold, the fire and, and, and the wood. But uh, where is the lamb? But where's the lamb? But, but where's the lamb? Where's the lamb for the burnt offering? In other words, ain't this the covenant? Yes, sir. Are we going to offer the burnt offering? Yes, sir. Oh, I see the wood. I see the fire. I see the knife. But what I do not see, I don't see the lamb. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't see the lamb. I, I, uh, I, I don't, I don't, I don't see the lamb for the burnt over. And at this point, Abraham can't talk. He can't talk. Got him. Choked him up. So he said, he couldn't say, it's you, son. <laughs> no, he didn't. What did he say? He said, yeah. This is in the Bible. I don't have to make up nothing. It's right, in, it's right here. Yah will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Do you see it? The covenant of Isaac. I'm sorry. The, the covenant that's now with Isaac is the prophecy concerning Yah providing his own lamb out of the mouth of our ancestor Abraham. Even though at this point, Abraham really still does not fully understand. Now, I've been reading this text a long time, and what I believe is that Abraham, at this point, had to believe in a resurrection. Because that would be the only way a father would be even willing to sacrifice a son. There would have to be a resurrection. In other words, he had to believe that death does not have the final say. He, he would have to believe that the covenant is more powerful than death. He'd have to believe 
that he had, that he was able. And y'all know the story. They, the Bible says, so they both of them, they went both together. Which means at this point that Isaac, now you're starting to get insight to why Isaac was chosen over Ishmael. Because at this point, Isaac said, if that's what it takes, Father, for this covenant to be ratified, if it, if it takes me to carry the wood, if it takes me to climb up on the altar, if, if it takes me to lie down, I'm not going to fight you, Father. I'm not going to fight you. You're an old man, and, and I'm a young man. I'm not going to run, Father. I'm not going to fight you. I just want to know if this is the way. If this, if this is the way, then let's go together. Let's go together. And uh, they went together. And they came to the place which Yah had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood on the altar and bound Isaac, his son. What are we talking about here? Isaac let him. That's what I'm talking. That's what we're talking about. And uh, laid him upon the altar of wood. Now I know many of y'all can't see this. But the tithe in its original, in its original pictograph form is two sticks. It's wooden sticks. It represents wood. And there is Isaac. And there is Abraham. Abraham giving his son Isaac willingly willing to lay his life down. For what, Moray? What are they going to do all this for? For the covenant. That's why. This is all for the covenant. Abraham giving his son. His son willing to lay his life down. For the Isle of Tile. And the angel of Yahuwah called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, 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 Abraham. Woo! That's got to be the best thing he heard all day. When he heard the angel call his name, oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Abraham said, here I am. I'm right here where you told me to be. I'm here, right here. You 
You told me to go to Mount, I went. You told me to bring my son, I did. You told me to bring the wood and the knife and the two minutes I brought it. I'm right here. In obedience to you in the covenant. I'm here. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the land, neither do anything unto him. For now I know that you fear Yah, seeing that you have not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behind him, Around, caught in the thicket by his home. There was no accident. There was not no coincidence. At that exact place, at that exact time, there was a ram in the bush. When he needed somebody, when he needed a sacrifice, when he needed a go-between, when he needed something to take the place of his son Isaac, he was already provided. And when we needed a son, when we needed a savior, when we needed a sacrifice, it was not Abraham, but yeah. It was not Isaac, but it was Yahuwah in the form of man. Saving us according to his own covenant, taking our place, dying on our behalf. up to this truth about the covenant and then trample the blood of Hamashiach under our feet. Shame on us. Because death couldn't keep him in the ground. He rose again. I'll get into this next week. He's coming back to Maybe tomorrow if I get a chance to go live again. I'm going to show you a little further about this covenant. And why this olive tile after 400 years is getting written here. I'm going to show you why it got wrote here in these United States. And hopefully one or two or three more Israelites will wake up. Maybe one, two or three more heathens will wake up. Maybe one, more, two, three more sneak listeners. Don't have to be no sneak listener no more. And we'll turn to the Elohim of our covenant. And dedicate their life to him. Because he gave his life for us. I gotta go, Zaya. Enjoy being with you. Put a one million in the chat. Thank you, administrators, for your, your hard work in the chat. And all of you that made this time together profitable. If you learned anything, if you were helped and encouraged, send a donation to the station. You know we full time. And remember that this eclipse ain't no normal eclipse. It's drawing the olive tile, which represents the covenant of our ancestors. We're going to take a look at our ancestors again, hopefully tomorrow night. Pray for me. I'll pray for you. 
looking up. Hello.